five, four. Ah! <laughs> If I spam the audience, all right, here we go. We're gonna spam the audience so that Facebook Live could see who beautiful souls are learning with us. Look at these beautiful nishamas. Everyone, you want to say hi? You're just gonna sit there looking cold at all the precious brothers and sisters around the world watching. There we go. All right, isn't this a gorgeous space? Okay, hi Facebook world. We regard and honor you, Facebook world. Hi Tova, thank you for watching with us. We do, you know, because some people can't get out, but it's really precious that we're all learning together. Okay. Are you guys ready to start our song? Yeah. We have a song for you, Facebook world. Here we go. Okay, and there's a reason. We're going to see later why this song is so applicable. If you guys need lyrics, they're on the floor. All right, here we go. Ready? We are rising up like a phoenix from the fire. Brothers and sisters, spread your wings and fly high. We are rising up like a phoenix from the fire. Brothers and sisters, spread your wings and fly high. Tonight, we're gonna to take the attitude of rising. So before we begin, we always start with, thank you, God. Hi, God, hi, God. I wanna say, hi, God, hi, God. You might not be in a good place with God. You could say, God, what's up with that? It's not cool. Why you gotta go and do that, God? Or you'd be like, oh my gosh, God, thank you so much. What an awesome thing that there is this crazy lightning storm that like literally shook my entire house. The poor dog was like tail between the legs, crawling on it. Hey, Hi. Hi. and then we text, and she's like, "Oh my God, there's rain!" And I was like, "Yeah, because it's the Cause she said before that she's like, she's Mashiach should come before my shoe." And then like my house started shaking. <laughs> <laughs> so my house started shaking, and I was like, "Mashiach is coming." She's like, "No, Noah's Ark is coming." <laughs> Leia. Hey, Leia. We're officially, you've landed in Israel, so there's sushi everywhere, and Israelis are chutzpahdik. We do what we want to do, so Push. just, there's, and there's two pools. Yeah, so if I'm speaking and I'm like in the middle of a profound teaching, you just get up and get yourself more sushi, okay? It's cool. All right, so yeah, because how random is it that on the one night of the year that I'm going to get up in Romy's house and talk about the flood that we'd have like a deluge minutes before, and I want to thank all of you for coming so much because I know it's easy when the rain starts falling just to stay in your house. But you guys all came out, so let's round of applause for you. Yeah. That's really impressive and amazing. So I really, I'm grateful, I'm so grateful. And I'm so grateful because the truth is that about an hour before the class, the original hosts felt that they needed to cancel. Um, and so I had a, mo a moment of freak out, and I called Naomi. Naomi. <laughs> Naomi is the... Yeah, Naomi is the executive director of the Happy Minion, the, the, the synagogue that puts this um, class on. And I said, Naomi, I can't. I have to teach this class. And she says, fine, what do we do? I said, call Romy. So within an hour, she, Romy had taken, that's the one who lives here and made this beautiful space for us. She had taken everything from her sukkah and ran it upstairs. Everything you see here was not here about an hour ago. So humongous. Thank you. And what's, what's so amazing. 
amazing about that is I feel like I'm living the Bible because Noah, or we'll say Noah, was the person who saved the world when there was a flood. And there was a flood, and I was having, I was like, okay, faith, faith, ah! <laughs> what am I gonna do? And then they, as if saved my life. So dear modern day Noahs, I really, I tremendously thank you. Um, we also want to thank a really holy woman named Tara Posner who helped sponsor this year. Um, and she just wanted to give gratitude to God and wish uh, speedy healing to anybody who needs that. Amen. And also to Barak Raviv, who's a massive contributor and he should be blessed with his new wife. Um, also, we always, um, so some people here, I won't like cast my eyes, but some people here have never been to a Torah class. So I'm going to be introducing some of the concepts. Um, as if they're new, because anyways, everything can be new to us every day. Um, one of the things that we do when we learn Bible or spirituality is we set an intention, a dedication. Uh, so we can all take a moment now, and you could send the beautiful energy that's going to channel down in this next hour out to anyone in the world that you want. So I'm going to send it in particular to Miriam Barilana, to Shoshana Bachanachaya, and Ariella Ruspa Bracha Ita, and you can, and also to Hanita Miriam, shout out your way. And anyone here, you can just take a moment. If you feel like closing your eyes, you just like have an intention. Like I want the good vibes that we're gonna bring down in this hour to be for the healing, for the merit, for the person finding their soulmate, for people having peace in their home, for people struggling for children. They should have any blessing you want for anyone in the world, including yourself. Just take a moment and do that. And Facebook world and people here even less more awkward. We always invite sponsorship because we want to make these things happen and we want to do it big. We want to put cookies and sushi and beers and holy brothers you know we want everybody to be able to come so that's just an open invitation hi welcome hi. welcome oh round of applause round of applause yeah. <laughs> it's fancy yeah. amazing someone needs an orange ground see when we're in the right. big bar we'll just sit yeah <laughs> alternatively do you want a stump that might be okay. i'll bring you a stump a very beautiful stump at that Cool. Cheers. All right. Guys, here's the other thing. I really love group participation. You can ask any question at any time, but mostly you just have to feel free because I don't want anyone to feel stuck. If you have to go, you can go. If you want to stay, you can stay. We have a little bit of an after party in like a very chill way, uh, so you could do that. Okay, so this year I have entitled it um, Mind-Blowing Things and Messages. So what we're going to do is the following. I have taken the last two portions of the Bible because we sort of missed the opportunity to learn Genesis, Reishi, the first opening. Even though it was last week, we're going to bring it into this week. And because we, how can you skip Reishi, right? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So I'm calling this mind-blowing in messages. So all I'm going to do, I'm not going to give you a cohesive story. Yeah. else done that I needed to get done all these papers each one is something that might perhaps blow your brains out in the best way but here's what you have to do after every one you have to rate it okay you have to be like oh or, eh, or eh. none of them are gonna be like this forget it this is a collection of gold over the last 15 years of the most epic Torahs that I could find so then at the end you have a job because at the end I'm gonna ask everybody to turn to the person next to them and tell and share. Oh, nice. We got an Adam in the house. Adam. I'm going to have you cook. Oh, we need big applause. Big applause. Here we go. Here we go. Woo! You made it! This man can twist you into a pretzel and cure any of your health ailments or migraines on any day. I highly recommend his practice. Check it out. Check it out. Yeah, yeah. He saved, he saved me on numerous occasions. I was like in synagogue going, I can't see straight. And he's like, eh, eh. All right. 
You know what? You could even have my chair. One of you can have my chair. Sweet. All right. And at the end, and at the end, you could, someone can have a stump. There's a stump and a chair. At the end, I'm going to ask everybody to share their most favorite mind-blowing moment with the person next to them, okay? Welcome. Come on in. All right. So for the first mind, guys, I need, I need security. So how are we doing, guys? Woo! gives me a bigger thumb up. Who's, oh, oh, there's competition amongst the winds. All right. I'm going to hand you the first page of the Bible. And when I do that, I just need to ask you to please not put it on the floor because it actually has God's name in Hebrew. So uh, one of the practices we do in Judaism to respect God is we don't put things with God's name on the floor. And we don't throw them out either. So this, any other page I give you tonight, you could throw out, put it on the floor, Use it for toilet paper in your next camping trip, not this one. Okay, so uh, maybe share every other person. Sweet. So what I'm going to share with you is one of the most incredible teachings I have ever learned. And, you know, I don't think I ask God for help. Hashem, please help me stay humble. Hashem, please help me channel the right towards. Hashem, please help me we do it within the hour, respecting people's time. Hashem, thank you. Amen. 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 Are you happy in there? Do you want to come outside? It will be. No we problem. totally have space. This is Israel. Space expands. If you want to come out, we would love it, but no pressure. All right. I am going to now show you how the entire history of the entire world is wrapped up in the first two verses of the Bible. Has anyone learned this teaching? The entire history of the entire world is literally wrapped up in the first two verses of the Bible. from Rav Shlomo Katz, from Rav Shlomo Karlibach. And it goes like this, you guys. Shlomo! No! Sorry, my voice is really loud. Is, can you believe that Bible learning can actually be so fun? It's <laughs> so fun. Okay, guys, here we go. Bereshit bara elokim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz. We start together. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Ah, who, ah, ah, I said it, ooh. Ah, ooh, ah, ah. Right. So that's what happened, right? God created the heavens and the earth. But the interesting thing is it says Ha'aretz. And so the sages question, what does it mean Ha'aretz? So this is a hint to the land of Israel. Ve'ha'aretz, the land. Ha'itatohu vavohu ve'choshech ha'upnei tehom. The land was a mess. There was chaos, there was problems, there was seven years of war, there were Canaanite nations. For eternity, the land has been a mess. Does this make more sense now when you realize that Haaretz could be referring to Eretz Israel, to the land of Israel? Yes, absolutely. I mean, listen, it's awesome and it's beautiful and I've lived there for the last 13 years, but I want to tell you, we do not have a moment's rest. I mean, this year we even had rockets flying over Tel Aviv. And uh, this is not a political anything, I'm just saying. That the land has been in chaos. We have yet to have full peace. Please, God, tonight. And now this makes more sense. When we say we have darkness upon the depths, what depths? That land over there is filled with the most profound people. Within a quarter radius of a block, you have people that, that are like doing good deeds their entire life long. They plumb the depths of our tradition at every single meal. They dedicate an hour every day towards prayer. Hi, guys, come on in, join the party. Don't be shy, have some sleep. <laughs> Everyone to welcome the Prince of Pico. Prince of Pico. Oh, this is Adam's vine for a chair. All right, cool. So here's what it is, guys. So we're learning how the entire history of the world is in the first two port, first two verses. The choshech al tehom. There was darkness upon the text, and now what happened? The ruach elokim merachafet al pnei hamayim. A spirit of God hovered above the waters. Guys, what is water a metaphor for in all of our Torah class? Torah. Torah. Water is always a metaphor for Torah. And so it says, a spirit blew over the Torahs. What spirit is this? Say the sages, the spirit of Mashiach, of the Messiah. Vayomer Elohim Yehi Or. And finally, God said, let there be light. Vayahi Or. And there was light. 
that's it. The entire history of the universe summed up in the first two verses of the Bible. All right, who was that mind blowing for? Let's see your thumbs. That's, that's, that's amazing. That's mind blowing. That's mind blowing. Hashem created the world. It was a balagan. He fixed it up real good, and there was light. And the beautiful thing about light, for anyone that hasn't studied so much Torah, is that light is one of those things that represents oneness. Because when you're in light, it's a it's a sense of together, right? I'm, I'm, I'm finding it hard to articulate myself in this particular moment, but so well, boundaries you got it, you got it. A little bit when things are very light. Boundaries, boundaries blur when things are very light. Right, welcome, you should hang out with my hippie community in Israel. I <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's perfect, because we're actually going to study boundaries tonight. Cindy! Yes. Guys, I haven't seen Cindy in about 10 or 15 years. We went to elementary school oh, together. Can, so this I, is can really I just fun. say something that, that this made me think of? Yeah, of course. Literal Always, for free. Yeah. Here, right? Because the deepest point on Earth is filled with water. Wow, I never thought about that. That's right, the That's lowest it. place the on earth. So, will you guys pop the back door open for them, please? This is amazing. Wow, wow. thank you for coming. Yay! So Welcome, guys. Welcome. Everybody feel free. There's sushi inside, outside. There's drinks. All right, second mind blow. Ready? Tonight, we're going to discuss, we said, the creation of the universe. So, how did the universe start with the... Big the Big Bang! Okay, so technically what happens is everyone can fill the floor, we're gonna have a floor, you can lean on a couch. You wanna hear something, you wanna mind blow? Hanoch, would you like a mind blow about the Big Bang? Okay, check this out. So the question is, scientifically speaking, where did the Big Bang actually happen, right? Did the Big Bang happen, like where did it start? Where was the physical place in the universe where the Big Bang started, right? Did it happen somewhere up there in the Milky Way? Or like what's another name of another galaxy? Andromeda. Did the Big Bang explode for the first time in Andromeda? Did it explode maybe for the first time in Hawaii? Which by the way is a permutation of the four letter name of God. Hawaii is the oh and, they <laughs> and if you want to trip out more, what? what do they do? They do shaka. What's this? this is called kamitsa. This is the hardest work of the Kohen Gadol. The, the high priest in the temple used to take it. The hardest offering was with the shaka. And if you want to go crazier, obviously we know who's the leadership. The big kahuna. Oh, shock. What's our leadership? The kahuna. The kohanim. So Hawaii is known to be one of the most, uh, it's, it's some of the secrets of the Bible like yeah. made its way over there, which is like so obvious when you look at the people who come out of there, which tonight we have like a room full of Hawaiians for some reason. <laughs> so, oh, I just totally did that. <laughs> is where did the big bang explode out of and believe it oh we got a kashani in the house i wish because i know the people walking in i wish i could share with you each person who walks in is like a greater life than the next it's shocking like if you only knew what these two women contributed to the world you'd blow your brains out i'm sorry if i embarrassed you please forgive me but it's true it's true every person walking in i'm like oh wow all right the big bang here's our question Stearns. Where did the Big Bang explode out of? Hawaii volcano. Hawaii, Andromeda, Milky Way, LA. You know they say one of the portals to hell is in LA. I'm not even kidding. I don't, well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It says it says yeah. I think you can hear that. I see that. Uh, you talk. No, we discussed this on Shabbos. Yeah, apparently one of the portals to Gehenna is here in this holy city. Yeah, you know, I know. Let's explain something. Okay, so the sages have an answer, and they say... Say what? That's why you don't give LA tours. That's why I don't give LA tours. I wouldn't get such good business. No, no. You know where it is. So here's what it is. It, our sages say that the Big Bang exploded out of, and I'll say it in Hebrew and then I'll, I'll translate it into English, of the place in the world where was the Kodesh Kedoshim. That means the Holy of Holy. Wow. That means in English, the, the foundation rock. In other words, that you know that golden dome over the wall in Israel? There's like a golden dome. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah? You know what I'm saying? Underneath that is what's called the foundation stone. And that's where Adam and Eve brought their first sacrifices to God. Noah brought his first sacrifices to God. And so that's where Isaac was sacrificed, as if, right? This foundation stone had a room over it. And this room was called the Holy of Holies. What does that mean for us in our lives? The entire universe exploded out of the Holy of Holies. 
and that's very very important especially for someone like me who's like always pursuing spirituality to realize also the mundane is the holiest of holy mm. and, and you know um, Rav Shlomo Karli Bach brought a, a guru to his moshav to his uh, settlement when there was a lot of young mothers that were struggling and this guru said to the young mothers you know the holiest work you can do is change a diaper because how different would your spiritual practice be if you knew that you had no time to pray and no time to learn Torah and no time to like, you know, sit it like a sister circle and like om, but rather you knew that changing that very diaper was the holiest thing in the universe. So I bless all of us first and foremost to know that whatever we're doing is literally the holy of holies because the entire universe exploded out of it, right? Mind blowing? Yeah. yeah. Can I get those? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Oh, we got yeah. two out of 25, not bad. Hold on, what was the first one? The history of the world is found in the first two verses of the Bible. That's right. That was really interesting, right? We're going to teach Adam later. And then the second one was we learned about the question of? Guys, you're all beautiful, but participation really needs to come up so that I don't have to keep sweating. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to keep fixing this because it's just not staying on, so forgive me. All right. So then we learned about all the days of creation. How many days of creation are there? Seven. Aha, uh -huh, trick question, right? It's both, right? Because there's six days of creation, but really there's a seventh where God's just like, it's time to chill out, right? Okay, so here's the interesting thing. If you look in the grammar of the Bible, you can see that every single day it says, Yom Rishon, the first day. And he creates all the stuff on the second day, it says, Yom Sheni, the second day. He creates all the stuff, Shlishi, the third day, and so on and so forth. Except for on the sixth day, it says, Yom Ha Shishi. Huh. Which is the Hebrew, is it infinitive or the article? article? I, I never, uh, grammar was not my name. Yeah, I said teacher article? Teacher. <laughs> teach it to us. <laughs> <laughs> We're busy doing Oregon Trail, right? Yes, Oregon This is very important. Right. <laughs> so, Yom Hashishi. So, we have to stop and ask the question why is there a He, the letter He, in front of Shishi on the sixth day? Because the sages teach us it's not actually talking about, it says, and we, every Friday night, we bless on our Kiddush, on our ceremonial wine, Yom HaShishi, Vayechulu HaShamayim Ve'aretz, on the sixth day, and then it was completed, all the land, HaShamayim Ve'aretz, all the heavens and the earth. So we think, right, it's referring to Yom HaShishi, that day that God completed creating the universe. Actually, if you really want to know why it says Ha, it's because it's an inference to another sixth day. Does anyone know what that sixth day was? A little bit advanced for some people that are just starting to learn, forgive. Say what? Shavuos. Shavuos. What's Shavuos? The giving, of the, the giving of the Torah. On the day that God gave the world the Torah, the infinite wisdom compressed into the finite, as David Sachs says, right? So for anyone that's just, again, learning new, this book, it's cute. We call it the Bible. And you say, oh, it's a history book. But it's not. This is the infinite compressed into the finite. And on the day that God decided that that channel of wisdom was ready to come down into the universe, then heaven and earth were complete because then, and only then, we were truly in a relationship with God. Right? If you're still searching for your soulmate, it's cute. But only on that day, only on that day where you're really with your soulmate, then you're complete. It's the relationship. God created the whole entire world just to have a relationship with us in the first place. So Yom HaShishi, it says, now you know, I thought this was mind blowing. I can't tell if you're mind blown or bored, so let's do thumbs. <laughs> ah, that's so cool. Now, every time you say Kiddush and Adam Sorry, stands, I'm back Woo! Yeah! 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 Now, that's my kind of girl. Gets up, gets sushi, makes a noise on the way in. Thank you. Yeah, Lachaim, yeah. Lachaim. So, guys, now every. Did you ever know this when you made Kiddush? Gentlemen who make Kiddush, did you ever know this? Did you ever know this when you make Kiddush, when you're saying Yom Ha Shishi? Then you knew this? I just learned what you're talking about just this past Shabbat. Oh, you're so advanced. <laughs> I just learned it. I just learned it. Lechaim, lechaim. Did you guys ever know that? Isn't that cool? Yom HaShishi yeah. refers to the day where we receive the Bible. Oh, come on in. Make it with you. I love your people. All right, yeah. I, I asked everybody yeah. why we say HaShalom during the Chagim. And the best answer I got is that the hey is is the letter that allows, has a little break in it, so it allows us to have chuba to return back, and maybe that's why it says mashallah. But that's a tough question. I would love to ponder upon that after. Will you please remember? 
Because I don't actually like losing this question. The questions are actually my favorite part. The information is sitting here. The questions are what makes it new. Will you, if you can, we try to remember that so we can discuss it in the uh, after party? Okay, let's do that after party. Can we party here all night long? <laughs> all night long. 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 Okay, next mind blow. You ready? Yeah. We're going to learn. Guys, I told you, this is a collection of mind blows, and then I'm going to explain why we're blowing our minds. We're now going to learn. A Gun Aiden Midrash. Now, I need translators. Gun Aiden Midrash. Gun Aiden Midrash! <laughs> okay, guys, what does that mean, anyways? Let's just, we have to go back to basics. We gotta help. The story of the Garden of Eden. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, but like, we could imagine different things of the Garden of Eden. You know, when I saw the movie Avatar, even though I was kind of unhappy that I saw it, because like, it felt a little bit like uh, corrupted in my heart, like, God bless the makers of Avatar. But, anyways, when I saw it, I had the first vision of really what I thought the Garden of Eden looked like. Do you guys know that scene where all the people are like sitting around yeah. that massive, gorgeous tree and Woo! they're like. <laughs> right? <laughs> No, I want this. Okay, let's let's just do a collective woo. Woo! Collective woos are very important. I want to just say one more time how you know I talk up here like like proper comedy. It is so intimidating to stand up here. It is so intimidating. You're natural. You're natural. Thank you. Okay. So. Okay. So, check this out. I read in the Midrash, what did the Garden of Eden actually look like? This is a short one, but it blew my mind, so I have to include this in the Mind Blowing Tours. Sylvie, so wherever you got that jacket, you just became the coolest person in the world. <laughs> Seriously, Punky Brewster at her best. Okay. Really cool. Gun Aiden, do you want to know what it looked like? What? Did you ever wonder, does anyone have an idea, what did Gun Aiden look like? Anyone on Facebook Live know? Tova, do you know what Gun Aiden looked like? Oh, Rivka says it's mind blowing. Woo, got a thumbs up. Anyone know what Gun Aiden looked like? What did the Garden of Eden look like? Okay. It had a nice tree in the middle. That's right. We're going to talk about that nice tree in a moment. Anyone have any lush, ideas? Lush. 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 Actually, it was completely and utterly barren. It was initially completely and utterly barren. When Adam woke up from his divine slumber, he looked around and saw nothing. Wow. Ah, uh, do you want to continue the Torah? Why? Why did God do this? So this, this isn't. We're This is now. This is an additional mind blow. God did this. Oh, you know. We just had this discussion. Do you want to say or not so much? No, thank you. It's been a long day. That's my sister. Exactly. So God did this because when Adam woke up, he had an intuition, and he saw that it was bare, and it, he felt that it was lacking. And when he saw that, he said, "God, please, can we please have rain?" And in that moment, God cast a massive rain down, which again represents relationship, because rain is that penetrating force, like the masculine force that penetrates into Mother Earth, which is the feminine force, right? Which allows Woo! for rain. Yeah, yeah, rain is, yeah, that's a mind blow in and of itself, right? And then, and then immediately, like, oh, we got thumbs up! Yeah, that's what rain is. Rain is the relationship. That's why rain is such a big deal in Judaism. And God wanted that man and God, the initial, the first thing is that we should have a relationship. So Adam had to be vulnerable enough and say, God, please, can we have rain? He knew somehow what rain was, I don't know how. God sends rain, and in that minute, everything was right in potential, ready to spring up, and then in, oh, that was good, that was like, I feel yeah, like yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Whippy Goldberg in Sister Act. And then, right at that moment, all, everything sprouted and blossomed and bloomed, and poof, it became that lush jungle that we were talking about with the experience. You could see, do you see every story in the Bible, it's not about them, it's always about us. And sometimes our biggest blessings are just waiting in potential, but they're waiting for us to call out and say, God, I don't know what to do, but help. And in that moment, all the beautiful blessings can sprout forth. But, so thank you. That was it. We that added an extra mind blow. That was beautiful. But I want to share with you what the Midrash says it looked like after that. So it says, and, and I'm sorry, all my books are in Israel, so I don't have the accurate sources, but it is in the Midrash, and you can find it there if you look. Oh, Hashem, can we please go home to Israel so that okay. I could have yeah. 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 We're ready. We're so ready. This is everybody. Or this is all day. included universal projects. There's nothing exclusive yeah, about that prayer. Yeah, you drop this house in, like, Talbia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if that's your preference. <laughs> you, you prefer Talbia? Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, sure. You can take a huge number knock you get Talbia. Sure. Does anyone here want Tel Aviv? Yeah. 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 Y
be cool. No one's up for spot. spot. I'll come spot. with you. Where are you? <laughs> okay, so Gun Aiden apparently had approximately 800,000 trees in it. And it says that every single one of these trees was a completely unique species, more beautiful, incredible, and wonder that wonderful than the next. Every single one of these trees had beautiful, awesome, epic fruits growing off of it. You could eat not only the fruit, but the bark itself, maybe, depending on which commentator you look at. And that in the center of these 800,000 trees, each one their own species, was the tree of life making a canopy over them all. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. wow. I read that and I was like, I thank you so much, Sages, for disclosing this information that I just needed to hear. Because I never knew what it looked like, you know, we all have our fantasy, like, did it look like that movie, this movie, you know, but like, 800,000 trees, everyone is different, I'd be in heaven, you'd have to yank me out of there. Wow. Okay, mind blower? Nice. Yeah. I'm going to keep fixing, I feel self-conscious, so I'm going to keep declaring it. Alright, now, <laughs> next question is, I'm gonna, oh, I'm going to go inside for a second, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> She's coming back. She went to fix her hair. So be patient. myself today it says that it's not good for man to be alone but it doesn't say that man was lonely yeah. so it's a question you could be right but I learned this from a friend he should be blessed um, and I think he was on to something and what about jealousy so jealousy is it's a few later we have, we have it's a few later but we're gonna catch that there's a few, there's number two I have a secret number two jealousy I think is number four. Oh. yeah but we just looked through ratio it's really quick okay why is this so relevant why, guys, why is it so relevant that shame is the first emotion in the Bible? Because we all... To embarrass someone is like killing them. Oh, that's beautiful. I never thought about that. Good one. Cool. Good props. In the Jewish tradition, when you embarrass someone, it's as if you kill them because when they lose the blood from their face and they turn white, it's equivalent to taking their life force away. God forbid, so Hashem, please help us never embarrass anybody. Amen. 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 By the way, when I say Hashem, I mean it's just the Jewish way of saying God. It means the name, but anyways. Really, Something about me? <laughs> <laughs> Did you put your ring light on? Or? 
Uh, the ring light, I first, I guess my my power pack wasn't actually powered up though. You tilted. Did they feel really shame because tilted. they were you want? naked? Well, they did feel shame because they were naked, but first it says they didn't know they were naked, so they did not feel ashamed. Okay. But then what would we go back to what we're saying? Then they ate from the tree. <laughs> now, now I can have those beautiful wings in my eyes. Yeah. Now they know the difference between right and wrong, or good and evil. Okay, so and it is connected. It is connected. And by the way, if anyone wants the verse, it's 225. But here's the thing. I'll tell you why I believe that God has the first emotion as shame. Because, uh, here we go. Who here feels shame? Everybody's hand should be raised. Because shame is the one thing that tells us we're more bad than good. And whatever we feel shame around, all of us. Okay, uh, don't take it from me after 10 years as a therapist. <laughs> But take it from me after 10 years as a therapist. So the core and crux of all of our pain is deep. And it can be silent shame. It's not like we walk around feeling ashamed, but all of us have it. Whether it's we're not good enough, we're not pretty enough, we're not rich enough, we're not smart enough, we're unlovable, we're unwanted, we're, you know, the list can go on and on. But all of us have it, and it's a lifetime process to deal with it. And there's really two responses that I like to say to shame. First is, F shame! Yeah. <laughs> F shame! Like I was, like literally sometimes like, they instruct my clients to just, I, I try not to curse, but then like sometimes it's really for holy purposes, and we say F shame, because how dare it make me feel bad about myself, right? I am trying so hard in this world, says all of us. But then the second thing about shame is God bless shame, because shame gives us the map, the treasure map, to those places inside that are hurting that we need to look to so that we can develop our unique precious light. Our unique light, every single one of us has some extraordinary talent, all of us. Maybe your talent is subtle, maybe your talent is being in silence, maybe your talent is yoga, maybe your talent is being an Olympian, maybe your talent is running a shul, maybe your talent is black and white style, maybe your talent is, <laughs> you know, like whatever, whatever it is, all of us have a, no, but all of us, all of us have a unique precious light. All of us have a unique <laughs> precious light. Really, it's really important to know. And that unique precious light is actually developed as a result of the shame that we experienced in childhood. Much like a negative picture, when you t back in the day when we had like pictures and we went to like the picture store and you had to develop your negatives. So that shame that we felt as a child, at a certain point in puberty, it, 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 it morphs and it changes and we start a trajectory to develop our unique passion at light and that is due to shame. And it's sort of the same parallel as Vayahi Erev, Vayahi Boker. Let there be evening, let there be morning because as we all know, first comes the darkness and from that emerges our unique light. So wow, how crazy, shame is the first emotion in the Bible. Woo! Woo! Wow. So by the way, the second was fear. Wow. I was afraid in 310. I was afraid because I'm naked, so I hid. When God calls out to Adam and Eve, he says, where are you? But I know we haven't gotten to Noah yet. Anyone could leave when they want to leave. I'm just going to keep going because so this is so good. Woo! <laughs> it's not me. It's the content. It's so good, you know? I think. But isn't that amazing? Did you guys ever think about that? The first emotion in the Bible is shame. Can I? Can I? Yes, yes. Chloe, up? please. It's, uh, your question Just was... try to speak loud for the Facebook world. Okay. Can you repeat your question? Why do we think that it's shame? Um, yeah. It yeah. Something like that? Yeah. Okay, so I, I thought it's very interesting that the first emotion is one that's kind of like, if you were to talk about it Kabbalistically, is not coming from the light, but it's coming from, you know, shame, doubt, guilt, it's all associated with satan, with the negativity. So it's very interesting that that is the first emotion. Well, that's exactly what I'm saying. Via he Erev, yeah. there's night. Yeah. And then there's the always. And you and I know, and everybody else in this room knows, yeah. that it's our dark. Yeah, it's our dark. Our dark times. Yeah. The difficult stuff. Yeah. The stuff yeah, we don't believe we can get through that, that turns us, that gives us our, our strength. That's we all know that. Right? Yeah. Right? We've all, yeah. I don't want to be difficult, but. <laughs> <laughs> She's Break it down now. <laughs> it's it's you said that it's like, they didn't, at first they didn't realize they were naked and they didn't feel shame. Correct. Yeah. So there was a period of time. After the rain. Can you imagine how good they felt? Bliss, bliss. <laughs> there, I think bliss was the first bliss. bliss. Oh, I think the first emotion, sure. most, first emotion was joy. I agree. And it's innocence. Same. And innocence and ignorance and pure right. like simcha. Right? Uh -huh. But the first one we zoom like in that. on is like, oh, they know shame, they know fear. But that, right. that maybe isn't actually the first. I think you just brought down a messianic Torah. Thank you. Yeah.
That's that was new. I like that. The first express Torah in the Bible is shame, but the Considering this shear is put on by the, ha it's joyfully presented by the happy man. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna pasque him. We're gonna declare tonight on this Beitin Shalmala that the first emotion was probably bliss. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I like that. There we go. All right, first, that, 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 this is just like so amazing. This is like a love learning Torah because you get to, this is like what who thinks about this. Cool. All right. Uh, hoo ha, hoo ha. Quick, quick mind blows. So I gotta monitor my time, and there's a lot of cards here. I j oh, I'm gonna skip the snake. Okay, so snake, anyone who knows me knows is like deeply my biggest fear and I've done tremendous work around trying to like loosen this fear, but the snake is big. And everybody who knows me also knows that my greatest passion is awaiting the messianic time and I'm so excited about it and I can't wait for it and I believe in it. I believe it can happen any moment, literally, because that's what the sages say, so I'm just, they don't believe in what they say. But this is a snake, right? We get introduced to the snake in the very first portion. I want to tell you that after you start studying Bible, you're going to see that the snake appears, whether in the shot, the simple reading, or in the complex reading, it's the snake begins to appear in almost every single portion in the first two books of the Bible. It comes in every single plague. There's also snakes. In, the, the snake is all over the Bible. But the snake, as we all know, the mind-blowing Torah, and this is very connected to what we were saying about darkness and light. The snake, and this is a well-known Torah, but for anyone that doesn't know it, now it's going to be perfect. Lord Greg knows this. Are you ready for this? Tell us, what is the gematria of Nahash, of snake? What is the numerical value, the numeral numeral value? Say <laughs> what? You do, you're just being humble. The snake, nun, chet, and shin totals to 358, and that is the same numeral, num I can't say, numerical. numerical value as the word Mashiach. Wow. That the, the numerical value of the snake, that which represents the evil inclination, but also all healing, by the way, uh, is the same exact value of Mashiach. So those things that are hard for us, those places where our evil inclination plays out on us, is because, again, that's where, our, that's where our unique light comes from. And the snake is the one who introduces shame. So here we go. Our darkness is brought out. Our shame is brought out. All those places where I think I suck and I'm a loser and I'm alone and nobody likes me are those places where I'm going to, again, develop my unique messianic life. Cool, huh? Beautiful. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's so much more, but just because town is out of go quick. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Quick mind blow. I was going to just... Uh, Guys, if I made this year three hours, would people still yes. come? Yes. yes. I think I need to change it because I can never much. respect the hour and I want to respect Four people's hours. time. Yeah. There is a shear in LA on Thursday nights that goes three hours. I'm like, why can't I just be like, hey? Yeah, yeah. You can yeah. Do it. Really. All right. Oh, Any, but anyone who needs to go at any point, just feel free. Okay. Is this amazing? Yeah, My God. Really okay. The punishments. So we get punished in the Garden of Eden. Again, we're still not even in this week's parsha, but we'll get there. The punishments. I just want to share one because it's really amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah? Yeah, just one. Just one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we want bliss and joy. Right, right. See, these girls are already living in the next reality. Like, we have to talk about hardship? That's so old school. Punishments. The woman gets punished with a very interesting punishment, and it is Be'etziv til dibanim. Does anyone, can anyone translate that for me? With Be'etziv. What word is Etziv? Out. With sadness till di, you will raise, you will birth your children. Oh. My teacher Leah says, oh, I know, Rome. but I'll tell you why this punishment is so beautiful. Beca because this is after we ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And my teacher Leah says, you know why the curse is that with sadness you'll raise your children? If you think you know what's good for them, if you think you know what's bad for them, you'll have sadness. If you go into trust, 
that everything that's happening to you and to your kid, which I'm sure can be extraordinarily challenging, is from God and is for the good, you will have happiness. The problem is, once we ate from the tree of knowledge, we started getting confused and we think when our kid gets a bruised scraped knee, as my sister always talks about the book, The Blessing of a Scraped Knee, we think it's bad. So we feel sad. With sadness you'll raise your children. But the truth is, once I take a step back, and I get out of that paradigm of I know what's good and bad, I, I step back out of judgment, then I can be in happiness. Because yeah, maybe I lost this amount of money, or maybe I broke up with my boyfriend, or maybe this, or maybe that, and it seems really bad, but then I'll have sadness, because I'm judging it as bad, when the truth is that everything happens to us is good, and Amen. for the good, and the absolute highest, best way God can love us at any given moment. Amen. God forbid no one should know Amen. of you, then do a car crash, that's the highest way God can love you in that moment. Amen. You're having problems in your marriage, God forbid. It's the highest way God can love you in that moment. When you're throwing up. Remember when, what you talk. Yeah, say, say, say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that she were, but she was telling us, like, even when she would get, like, a, a really horrible cut, she would say, Barak Hashem, or she'd be throwing up, and she'd literally be saying, It happened once, I was trying to get happy to I was trying to get, and I was staying at your house, and I got this weird, I don't know what happened to me in the morning, I, I felt really sick, and I was so excited to come to the happy meeting, and I hadn't been in so long, I was so excited to get back, it was like, the, and David Sachs was talking in the morning, and I was like, I have to go, how much do I try to get out of the house for that class? I try to get, and all of a sudden I felt so sick, I started throwing up, but I realized in that moment, and again, it's not me, it's just like what we do as the Jewish people, that moment where I realized I'm not going to make it, and here I am throwing up, and I'm going, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. So because that's the truth, and the, what messed that up, and the reason we get sad is if I thought, this is bad, I'm throwing up, I'm going to miss David's class, I'm not going to get to have you, and yet this is bad, I'm going to be sad. Yeah. You know that changed my life. Wow. It did. Wow. I so <laughs> And we learned together, Romy, that actually I learned this year something interesting, that the gematria of oi, oi, you know how Jewish people say oi, oi, the gematria, the numerical value of oi is 17. What's also 17? Tov. Tov. Wow. So now, tov, good, good. So now when I say oi, I say tov. Oi, tov. It's the same thing. It's an, wow. that's a mind blowing wow. tour! Wow. Woo! You need to go here right now in this room, we're gonna start a revolution. We're all gonna walk around going, oh, oh yay! Okay. <laughs> okay, so, oh Lord, okay. Oh, we're almost at Noah, that's great. What time is it, just out of curiosity? Who cares? Who cares? Don't tell me. La, 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 No, it's not. I can do this in nine minutes. Not happening. Here we go. Now, I want to share with you some other mind blowing things. There's some hidden holidays within Breshi. And, you know, does anyone know the very hidden holiday that's wrapped up in that first portion of the Bible? Hidden holidays. Hidden holidays. Shabbos. It's not so hidden, but that's definitely in there. Shabbat, Sabbath, definitely in the first portion. So I'll tell you. The, there's a question in the Gemara that's asked. Oh gosh, I hope it's in the Gemara. I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in the Gemara. Yeah, I do. I gotta tell you, without my books, it's really hard to give over lectures. Oh, it's in your Gemara. It's in my Gemara. It's in Masecha Nili. Right. So, so um, there's a question asked. Help me. What is the question? You know. The question is where in every single holiday in the Jewish calendar you could find it within the five books of Moses. So every single holiday you'll find, like in Emor, you find a secret inference to Hanukkah, but in Bereshit you find a secret inference. So the question is, where do you find Purim? In, where do you find Purim in the Bible? And the word Haman, Haman, the villain of Purim, is in chapter. 311, it says, Hamin Haetz Asher Tzimticha. Is this the tree that I come, that you ate from the tree? Haman. Haman is right there. And you know what else? That, that is in the Gemara. It is in the Gemara. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what else is in there? And I only saw it for the first time this year. In 414, the word Esther is right there. Oh, it's it's wow. Esther, Esther, as in yes. Queen Esther, as in right. Purim. Now, why would it be important that Purim is in Breshi? Oh, sorry. Purim is the holiday. How do you explain Purim? Um, they tried to kill us? No, we didn't. We survived. <laughs> <laughs> that's part of it. Right, every Jewish holiday. Let's drink, actually. Oh, that's right. That one's the only one that's less great. Right. So, so, 
Ah, uh, right. So Purim is the holiday where we realize that everything we thought we knew wasn't true and that all the highest truths were happening for us and that God is saving us the entire time and we should just really celebrate and have a great life, like to enjoy. So the reason that's in there is because that's the end of the story. We said, in, for anyone that was here in the very beginning, we said that the entire history of the world is in the first two verses of the Bible, but really, that, that's Breshit's the beginning of human history. Purim is the end of human history because that's like the only holiday that's going to survive and every day is going to be this blissed out existence. So it's right there. Haman and Esther, right in there. Also, when God asks Adam and Eve, where are you? Do you know what word he uses? Ayeka. What is Ayeka? Ayeka is also Echa. Echa yash babadad. Tisha Oh, yeah? He's asking them, where are you? God knows where they are. Exactly. What he's trying to ask them, where's your head? What are you thinking? Yeah, where are you? Why aren't you in relationship with me? Why are you hiding from me? Where are you? Don't ghost me. Say what? Don't ghost me. Don't ghost me. Yeah, God is all the time saying to us, don't ghost me, for sure. For sure, and actually we learned that about Hanoch and Noah, who both, it says that they walked with God and that's why they were praised. Because they actually, they, they, they hung out, they were like, you know, broskis. You know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, so Ayeka Echa is Tisha B'Av, that's the darkest day of our calendar that will flip to be the most joyous day of our calendar. So both of those are embedded in Breshi. Nice. That's, wow. that's cool, right? Yeah, that's yeah. Guys, how are we doing out here? Okay, so one more question. Here's the question. Who will read it for me? Shout it out loud. Is the Bible out outdated? Is the Bible outdated? Yes or no? No. Oh, come on, guys. Somebody be rebellious. <laughs> yes. It's so boring. Who opens the Bible? Who studies Bible like there's Netflix to be watched? It doesn't apply anymore. Okay, ready? You want to hear some of the themes? Whoa, we got brothers. Brothers up in here. Welcome! Come on down, have some sushi, learn some Torah. Guys, is the Bible outdated, yes or no? Hell no. Hell no, you yeah. want to know why? You want to know why? Oh, you Ellie that we met yet, like two days ago? Hey Ellie, welcome. I adopted for you this morning. Is that okay that I said that out loud? No, it sounds condescending. Sending to say, oh, I prayed for you, but what I mean is I held you in my spiritual consciousness this morning because I just met you, and so I try to then include you into my prayer space. Wow. Wow. Okay, so you want to know what is within the first chapter of the Bible? Here we go. Searching for your soulmate. Eating. Desire. Blame. Women craving men's attention. Sibling rivalry. Jealousy. Getting naked and drunk. Childbirth. Feeling alone and displaced. Being annoyed, it literally says he was annoyed. Clothes, rejection, murder, repentance, music. We have the first musician in Brayshade. It literally gives us his name. Reptilians, giants, and heartfelt sadness. Wow. All of that. Can I see that? Yeah. All of this is within Brayshade. So do you think that this book is a history book, or do you think this is the infinite compressing the finite that God is looking at us yes. in 5,782? That's 2000, what year are we in? 2021? Uh, and God is looking at us and going, I, you guys are going through this. Is everyone going through something on that page? Yeah. Everybody. I know, I know. I don't know why people don't raise their hands, Kevin. I seriously. Okay, so I want to share like this before we transition into Noah, okay? That's the second portion. Rab Shlomo says, and this was sent to us by a friend, Stewie Wax, he should be blessed. Oh, yeah. Hi, Stewie. Hi, Hi Tava. Okay. Rab Shlomo says like this. Rab Shlomo uh, was like one of our, a lot of us like followed this one holy rabbi who's not really with us anymore, but he is emotionally, or spiritually. Okay. He <laughs> says, everybody knows that at one point in our lives, every person is driven out from paradise. That's Gan Eden. We come into the world children everything is blissful and then one day whatever we get teased we get bullied we realize our per parents aren't perfect you are mom you are dad yeah <laughs> but all that was they're watching at home hi guys hi jojo uh. there's at one point in our lives we all have our break sheet we all have chapter one of the bible we're all driven out of paradise does anyone here still feel like they're an innocent bliss and they never got kicked out of the garden of eden no and at one point, at one point of our lives, we managed to go through the flood. And I think this is like adolescence and like, and not, not necessarily within e ages, because we could still get kicked out of paradises and go through flood. 
but that there's sort of this thing that the Bible is really alive. Does anyone else here feel like their life's sort of been a little bit flood-like the last few years? Yeah. yeah. And at one point in our lives, and this is going to be the end of Noah, we'll get there in a minute, we're fighting against God. That's our ego, right? The, the, the negative part of ego. Ego can be great also. And then we're mamish at the end. Sometimes we feel like we're mamish at the end. And if we have emotional resilience, we end up with our Abraham, that one man of faith, and we've got to stick through it. Because this Bible, this bray sheet, and this noah, which we're about to step into, this is our lives. Wow. This is our life experience. This isn't Adam and Eve and the snake. This is us, us, and us. It's pretty mind-blowing, right? Should we have a few mind blows from Parsha Noah? Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone needs to leave, please. Again, I, I tell myself every time I'm not going to keep saying it, but I just don't, I don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable. I know in LA people are really polite, right? So don't just be polite. yeah, don't be polite. Don't honor yourself now. because the greatest way we can all honor godliness is when you're honoring your own needs first. Please. So really, everyone just feel free to do what you need to do, and I will not be offended if anyone goes around. So God is basically saying, "I feel you, dog. You are alone." <laughs> Every one of us is going through some form of shame. Or sh I feel you, dog. You're not alone. I want to read you the last few psukim of the parsha because it's really like you know when you're in a relationship and you get a text from your partner and you're like, I can't believe he said that. I can't believe she said that. Did you hear the tone in which she said it? And you read it like with all this negative vibes and they're like, Oh, I just meant like, honey, I'll be home in a minute. <laughs> and you were like, oh honey, I'll be home in one minute. And you're like, oh, whoops, I interpreted that wrong. So listen how God says. So first, when I first read this, when I first read this, I was like, God, God is harsh. And then I read it again with a heart of empathy, and I was like, wow, God is so beautiful. It says, Hashem saw, God saw that the wickedness, this is the end of Breshi, the end of Genesis, the first portion of the Bible. God saw that the wickedness of man was great upon the earth, and that every product of his thought of his hearts was but evil always. And God reconsidered having made man on earth, and God had, this is, listen to this, you won't believe it, and God had heartfelt sadness. And he said, I will blot out man who I've created everything, for I've reconsidered having made them. And at first I was like, geez, God, that's harsh. And then I was like, wow. Can you imagine how sad God must have felt when we didn't get it together? God had heartfelt sadness. Now there's commentators that disagree. Some say God has emotions. Some say God doesn't. You could decide that for yourself. But for whatever that is, all of us have mourned this place in our life, whatever that place is, where we felt heartfelt sadness. We felt like it was all over. But... We're made in the image of God. So if we have emotions, doesn't that mean God has emotions? So that's what some commentators do say. But some people say, no, you can't assign emotions to God. It limits him or it. Uh, Don't they also say that the reason why they affiliate emotions with God is so that we can better understand him, to kind of match, you know, to kind of relate to him? Sure. Yes, I think it's a machloket. I, I, don't, I, I don't know the truth. When I was a kid, I used to think when the rain came down, it was God crying. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. It makes sense because if God is our parent, parents in the room, can you please raise your hand? Parents? Wow, awesome. When your kid hurts, who hurts more, your kid or you? Oh, I don't know. Me. Did Shosh just give us an oh? Oh, that was, uh, oh, that was a Naomi? Yeah, so if God is our parent, I can't imagine. I mean, it, it would make sense. He's like, oh my God, your heart is broken. I'm so sorry. It just made, it just was rainy as I thought it. So that made me think of it. And I just, it really touched my heart to read those verses because I was like, oh my gosh, God, I'm so sorry. Like, you really wanted to make us something so beautiful. Yeah. And like, yeah, it also makes you think. Yeah, just like, of like something that you do yourself and like, you know, you, you make something and you look at it and I'm like, why? I should not made that at all. And that's yeah, there's regret. We have the experience of regret and sadness, and that's so real. And I think God is again saying, I feel you, dog. You are not alone. <laughs> you know, and it's really, I think it's just really beautiful. But Noah found grace in God's eyes. So, what I wanted to ask you guys really quick is what does it mean to find grace in, in someone else's eyes? Because that's like the thing that saved the whole world. There was one person who is the granddaddy of all of us, literally. Noah is the granddaddy of everybody. Abraham, not the granddaddy of everyone. Noah, granddaddy of? Everyone. 
Everybody. Wow. Like every human in the universe could say, oh, Noah's your grandpa, is my grandpa too. <laughs> So what, what does it mean? What do you think it means? I could tell the funny story that I tell every year. We have another sister, and she went on a date, and I speak so biblically that when she came back, I was like, oh, did he find favor in your eyes? <laughs> She's like, you mean, was he hot? <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I just not like, did you like it? You know, I, I, she, like, she thought it was very, very funny. Yeah. Right, like David said, he, he wrote in his script, whoever was in that class, like, he was trying to write in his, he's, David is one of our rabbis, and he said, he's a Hollywood writer, and he said he was trying to describe a scene for someone where they were in pajamas, and he said, should they be in undergarments? <laughs> okay, anyway, so what is it? Because as we're transitioning from the first creation of the world into the time where it's about to be wiped out, the thing that saved us is that Noah found grace in God's eyes. What do you guys think that means? Just a few answers, and we'll move to the next mind blows. And there is a point to all of this. I didn't just collect my favorite Torahs to give them over for no reason. There is a point. Roman, what you got? Well, I have a couple of things. First of all, Nayach spoke backwards is Chayim, right? That's right. So in Hitler, it's a kind of homeopathic, like the, the cure is within the disease. Uh, for sure. Um, and the other thing is that Rob Cook says, I have a daughter whose name is Ruby Chayim Geula. Wow. God bless her father. Wow, gave her that's a name. name. Chayim Geula. And he got that Torah from Rob Cook, and Rob Cook teaches that we'll only merit Mashiach, we'll only merit redemption, Geula, when we're able to find Chayim Be'enayim, Chayim in, uh, in each other's eyes, where wow. all I see is the grace in you. So, wow. um, and can I, can we, we yes. hold it? Will you remember that in that sentence? So that's amazing, because when we were encamped around Mount Sinai to receive the Torah, the Bible, the like divine wisdom flow, it says, Vayachen Ha'am, that we encamped as one. But what is Vayachen encamped? Vayachen. My teacher Lea teaches that it says we found grace in each other's eyes. Wow. And that's why we could receive the divine wisdom. Because only when we all looked at each other favorably and with compassion and love and understanding, was God like, okay, are you ready for the divine download right now? Mm -hmm. Wow, I, I had a problem with you and I could see you with like compassion and understanding. I could find, you could find grace in my eyes. Fine. God's like, oop, now, we're, now it's time. Did you remember the end of your sentence? Say what? Did you remember the end of your sentence? Because I interrupted you. Um, no, but Cool. <laughs> okay, so I, oh, no, the other thing I was going to say yeah. is just that all the time, like the times where it says pain, it says Yosef found pain in Kara's eyes, Rachel found pain in Yaakov's eyes, but it denotes like immense love, even if it's not like. Can you give us a bracha? Yes. Oh. Intermediate bracha, guys. This is not the ending bracha. We should, we should, um, you know, see, we should hear the lightning and see the thunder is happening right before our eyes in Geshem, like creation is happening in every moment and we should really, I should, wow. I should find pain in the eyes of those that I watch them, not just host in this house, but live in this house Amen. too. Amen. 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 And also everyone, you know, everyone. And, that, and that's essentially what saved the world, is wow. that God is... That was a great lightning. You know, there is a blessing to make on lightning. Mm -hmm. if, if you see a proper yeah. strike yes. of lightning, is yeah. it Osei Maseh yes. or is that thunder? I think it's Osei Maseh I thought that was the rain. Oh, thanks, guys. It was really beautiful. It was just this lightning. So if anyone sees a strike of lightning, you say the initial part of the blessing, Baruch HaTah, blah, 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 and then the end is, I wish I would, I think it, I'm seeing lightning and thunder, there are two blessings. There's two, they're different. Oh, yes, yeah, so Osei Maseh Bereshit is lightning, correct? Wow. Yeah. So if you want to, if you see a lightning strike, you can say Osei Maseh Bereshit, and if you hear a proper thunder, Baruch Atah Adonai Elohim Melech Olam Shekocho Gurato Male Olam. Amen. So quick question, quick question. Here's a mind blow, right? It's always relevant. It is always relevant. It is relevant. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the translation of seeing a lightning strike, Osem Maaseh Bereshit, is that God created the wonders of creation. So that's cool. We're like learning about it and experiencing it. Thanks, God. Wow. <laughs> Special effects Hollywood. I didn't even have to go to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Next line, well. In Chobos the Yeah. in Shara Bechina, he talks about contemplating the wisdom of the Asher, which is the ability to create the world. And one of those, one of those ways is to actually ponder physicality of creation so much so that back in the day you know when you if you're a spiritualist you're also a gemologist and an astrologist and a G, you know all of those things so ah, that is like totally plundering god's creation as well when you witness the, the, the theatrics of god's still pulling strength 
I would like to just take a moment and say, if this is not living in messianic times, I don't know what it is. When you have 30 people sitting in a room like, oh, this cool idea, oh, this cool idea, oh, godliness, oh, let's find favor in each other's eyes. Like, this is very precious. This is very precious. You know, we could be like at the theater, but we're like sitting here discussing the profundities of the universe and how to be better people. I really value that. Ready for the next mind blow? Why a flood? Naomi reintroduced this concept to me of asking questions. Why a flood? Did anyone of us ever think, like, wait a second, why a flood? Hello, why a flood? Good, so answer number one that the sages say is it was a mikvah. How do you say mikvah in English? Ritual immersion bath. It was a ritual immersion bath. A purification bath that Jews, um, men traditionally every day and women once a month will go immerse in a natural spring and they have them man-made as well that helps us renew it's a renewal so God wanted to renew the universe because our behavior got so bad by the time of grandpa Noah we were stealing from each other we were sleeping with animals we even had marital contracts with the animals okay yeah 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 it was it was like legislated yeah 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 and we were stealing from everybody all the time you walked in like you walked into the store like I'll take the gummy here I'll take a little olive over here. Oh look, it's a cookie. Right? We're just hijacking everything from each other all the time. And so we needed to renew the world. But so what's crazy about what is a flood? What actually naturally, phenomenally speaking, is a flood? Too much water is good stuff. Is it too much water? It's water with nowhere to go. You mentioned this earlier. What did you say we were gonna talk about? You said it's into it. Sorry, well, I said many things. <laughs> I, I remember one time on the fourth floor gym playing with you in kindergarten. I can't yeah, remember. Do you remember going to the principal's office with me then too? Yeah. <laughs> I do. <laughs> um, okay, so a flood is when water goes out of its boundaries. Wow. And what out of its boundaries? It's a boundary issue. It's not that there was too much water. We have plenty of water. It's all in the same place. It receded back. The water is fine when it's in the ocean. The thing that we were having a problem with by the time we got to the generation of Noah is I wasn't respecting you. I was stealing with you, uh, from you. I was sleeping with your animal, God forbid. I was doing all these crazy things. I didn't respect the boundaries of species. I didn't respect the boundaries of people. And so God, as we know, interacts with us the way we interact with him. He's like, you don't have any boundaries? Ooh, watch me, watch me. Wow. <laughs> Now watch me flood, flood the nation. <laughs> I've never actually heard that song. It's just from my students over the years. I learned that part. It'll be in the after party. I love your contributions. Yeah. It makes it more fun. People look this way. They look that way. One of the things that really tripped me out. Just can you say it loud? Because I want to honor the Facebook world. As I learned more Torah. Yeah. So growing up. Noah's Ark and the whole story of Noah is like... May I? Sure. Permission? Yeah. See, boundaries. I respected her. I asked her permission. The only thing is I didn't ask everyone else. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Growing up... <laughs> so we I'm sorry, Gab. Yeah, hold on. A little bit of... The story, and it's not necessarily Purim. It's not necessarily... Shout, shout, shout. Hanukkah. Or it's, it was always like the story of Noah's Ark in the nursery room with the cute little two by two animals and the ark and like the cutest little story. Yeah, God like says, you know what, there's gonna like be a floody, floody. Boiling floody. hot you water. Did you guys know that it was boiling hot water? That we were oh, we're gonna get there, we're gonna get there. like violent and vicious and what was happening that caused it. So I'm just curious, like why do you think society took this really kind of dark story and turned it into like, Essential nursery decoration. <laughs> I mean, um, if we want to answer that, we should talk about Hans Christian Andersen. I took a whole class on him in college. Cinderella, Beauty and the Beast. These are dark tales, but I don't know. Who, yeah, please. I would just say, on a level shot, if we're going to go from Tardis, which is the shot, we're going to go there. Shatter, there we go. It's so easy. Because it's not a complicated story if you don't go into midrashic content. So the two by twos and the animals, it's all very cute and sweet. And the ark is very physically, you know, a bow. It, it relates to all of those kind of childhood images. I just felt cheated. I was like, this is not a nice story. This is not a nice story. This is not a nice story. It like triggered me. All those nursery decorations. I'm like, who wants to hear the real story? Come around, Naomi. It's a birth of a nation. It is a birth. 
Birth is always so much fun, but it's really empowering, and there's like, I mean, so I think it's a birth, and babies are birth, and the blood was a birth of the nation. Beautiful. So, so these are awesome answers, and again, in the after party, I would love to keep going on this. I'm going to say that I'm going to go, honestly, for about 15 more minutes just to have one else's perspective. But yeah, the flood essentially is God's way of communicating with us. We have boundary issues, and it's time to fix those up. And I want to say, in, in synagogue, on the holidays, we auctioned off the different um, honors that you could receive at the synagogue. And one of the honors that was proposed was saying, oh, this one really helps people with boundaries. Nobody bid more on any honor than this one. Wow. Everybody wow. was bidding on this one. And I was like, oh, I want to do this honor for this person. And we all, there's all, there's boundaries to work through, and there's boundaries to work through about our, our that? For Yitzhak. Pardon? I don't remember which keyboard it was. Do you remember? It was for Yitzhak. Yitzhak is key. It was for Yitzhak because boundaries. Right. <clears throat> so in terms of boundaries, we can look at our own boundaries. Other people's boundaries and God's boundaries, we're not going to get into it, but I want to say a very poignant thing my friend Chen taught me. And we are, we're, Chen and I are in a relationship, we lead a course together, and we were struggling. It's okay that I say this because we're very cool and open. And uh, I mean, like, cool with each other, not like we're very cool. <laughs> we're very cool, so I can say this. And open. Uh, say what? And open. And, no, we're, we're very we're cool with each other. And um, she said, You know, Neely, I think that, because we were a bit upset with each other, and she said, You know, Neely, I think you were upset at me because you went beyond your own boundaries, and so you got angry with me. And a lot of times what happens when we're getting upset at other people, it's because we went over our own boundaries. We didn't respect our own boundaries, and then we just project that anger outwards. So there's so much mind-blowing stuff to learn. I mean, the flood is about boundaries. Yes. mind blow. Okay, you know, Naomi, you're one step ahead of me. I even have the chart for you. Boiled in Gehenna. It says that every single raindrop that came down during the flood of Noah was first boiled in hell. That is so crazy. Yeah, and you want to know why this is... Say what? It came from the bottom up and the up down, both both directions. This is the wi- the windows of heaven opened and the the Maya, no, the springs of the earth exploded. It was from both directions. There's deep meaning too, but we don't have time. Okay, but, Naomi, what does the next one say? No, 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 we're not there yet. We're not there yet. But, <laughs> but I'll tell you what's amazing. Rabbi Nachman, one of our one of our great great. So what's really important, Rabbi Nachman says, you know what, you feel like you're you feel like you're going through hell. Anyone here felt like they're going a little bit of hell this year? Yeah, all of us probably, right? You know what happens? He says that when you're ascending a level in spirituality, you actually go through a mikvah of fire, spiritually speaking. You go through a ritual purification per- process where your soul, as if, immerses into a bath of fire to take you to the next growth level. So if you're at a point of feeling like you're in a very difficult time, know that that's probably because you're growing. You're not in hell because you're in hell. You're not in hell because God's the great punisher or he doesn't love you. It's because we're growing, and that's when the hard times come, and that's what it represents, that each one was boiled. Okay, skip, skipping. Sorry, we just got to skip through some. It's so good. Oh, we're going to skip through the whole What? I'd like you to go longer. I would also, but I don't. I want to respect everyone. I have a really hard time navigating what's appropriate boundaries. boundaries. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to say this one really quick. This is a really big mind blower. This is a really crazy mind blower. My friend, what's your name? I never met you before. Mishael. Mishael, nice Mishael. to meet you. Mishael, can I blow your mind for a second on Torah? Sure. Okay, cool. You ready for this? Do you know the big, wow, reincarnation story of Noah? Who does Noah become? Does anyone know? Noah reincarnates according? Yes. Bam! Okay. Whoa! This is, this is mind-blowing. I'm going to do this with more passion. Here we go. Moshe Rabbeinu, Noah, reincarnates to become Moses. Why? What did Noah go into? The? Yamsu. Okay, okay good. The, the ark. The teva. Noah goes into an ark to save himself, and the ark goes onto water. How does Noah survive? He goes into an ark that goes onto the water. What's Noah's um, ark made out of? Oh, yeah. Gopher wood with pitch on the inside. What's Moses' is made out of? Both wood with pitch on the inside. Now it gets crazy. Hold on, I wrote notes because I want to say it. They were both put into the water to save their lives. 
Now it says about Moshe, the reason his name is Moshe is because Min Hamayim Meshituhu, from the waters they drew him. It wasn't talking about the Nile River that they drew Moshe. It was talking about the waters of the flood of Noah, that when they pulled Moshe out, Min Hamayim Meshituhu, he was pulled out from the waters of the flood. Now you might say, okay, maybe that's a little far-fetched. Yeah, you want to know why? What was, Mo what was Noah's job in this world? Noah's job was to save the save the world. And who did he save instead? Himself. Himself. He has to reincarnate into Moses because Moses then comes back to the world. And when God says, I am going to destroy the Jewish people, what does Moses say? No. Take no. my name out of the book. Kill me and save them. And what's the word he uses? Macheni na. Rearrange macheni and you get me Noah. Wow. The waters of Noah. You almost skipped that? Yeah. <laughs> I know there's so much. Do you, are you guys, are you, are you yeah, catching on to what I'm saying? What did you say? After party, after party, okay. after party. Okay. So, so that's why Mo Moses comes into the world to do the fixing of Noah. Vaughn, how cool is that? That's insane. Mind blowing? Did you ever know that, that Moses that. was the reincarnation of Noah? Yes, mind show, I saw that. Did you know? And what did you do? Did you know? Did you know? No, I didn't. Isn't that amazing? That's crazy. Okay, one quick question, because this is too funny, and I can't skip this one. What does Kentucky have to do with the Bible story of Noah? Does anyone know? For Oh my gosh, my sister did the coolest thing. She got us sour belts in rainbows. Rainbows for Noah, because the, you know. By the way, at the after party, I did write a rap about Parshat Noah, and I will perform it for you. It's pretty epic, but that's for the after party. It's a really good rap. It's a really good rap. I can't lie. Okay, guys, so for a pack of rainbow sour sticks that you could choose to share or not share with the people around you, what does Kentucky have to do with Noah and the flood? Is that where they built the rainbow? There is a holy Christian man who spent a hundred million dollars to build an exact replica of Noah's Ark, and it's in Kentucky. You can look it up online. The dimensions are exact. The dimensions are exact according to the Bible. It's huge. You gotta look it up online. It's, it's on YouTube. You look up Noah's Ark, in, Noah's Ark in Kentucky. It's one of the greatest tourist attractions in America today. Now, I, I thought, oh my God, I'm never gonna see it. When am I ever gonna go to Kentucky? I live in Israel, and now that I'm back in LA, I'm like, I'm going to Kentucky. You wanna go to, wanna, I just wanna fly to Kentucky. I wanna go to Noah's Ark. Can you imagine, guys? What, you can look it up on your phones. I won't feel that you're rude if you go on your phones right now and look up Noah's Ark in Kentucky, or look it up after. It's insane, right? You're looking at it? Oh my God, you have to it's exact proper. So this is this is really incredible. So I guess no one won, but if anyone wants a rainbow sour stick, you can take and pass. Take and pass, rainbow sour stick. Okay. Oh, somebody said it? Someone got it right? Someone got it right? It could be shared. Nobody wants rainbow sour sticks? Good, we're healthy. <laughs> you open them. Okay. Other mind blows. Other mind blows. Okay, because again, this is like where we're getting to the closure here. Other mind blows from Parshat Noah is, I just want everyone to imagine, first of all, what it was like on the ark, because it was it was term it was turbulent, and there were every there was every animal in the world. There was elephant poop galore. Can you imagine the lions roaring, and the toucans tuca, and the, and the cicadas? Anyone ever been with a cicada? And mosquitoes. I mean, every single animal. What's the loudest animal you could think of? Peacocks. Peacocks are really loud. Peacocks are really loud. Oh, I heard it like three miles away. Okay, so just I just want us to take a moment and imagine what it was like to be Noah and his little family being tossed and turned in crazy storm, not knowing what's gonna happen. Insane lightning and thunder. I mean, again, an hour ago, my house was shaking, right, Danielle? You felt the floor, and there they are in this ark with all these animals. And why, why did God have it that he had to live with animals for 150 days? That's just interesting, because I think he probably had to learn a lot about his own animalistic self, is my guess. Uh, but it's just, an, it's just a mind-blowing thought. Now, here's an interesting one. When Noah sent out the raven, the raven circled around the ark. It wouldn't leave. You want to know why? Why? There's a midrash, says my teacher Leah, that the raven was suspicious that Noah wanted to sleep with his wife. Uh, oh, my. What? My son said that at his bar mitzvah. Really? He was part of Noah, and his Rebbe had taught him to say it. 
Because it's no, interesting because no, it, it, it puts people, us into a different... And here's a 13-year-old saying the this. Raven was, the, raven was, the Raven was suspicious that Noah was going to try to sleep with Mrs. Raven. And so he didn't want to leave the ark too far because that's how messed up society was at that point. Wow. Okay, other mind-blowing things. I just want to let you know real quick because, again, I just... Oh, but there's so much good is that actually that the earth apparently only turned on its axis in the flood. And originally, that's why seasons developed. It says in the simple explanation of the Bible that seasons happened after the flood, because initially there were no seasons, it was perfect weather. And part of today's global warming situation, whatever it is or it isn't, let's not get political, is that actually the earth is starting to turn back off the axis so that we'll have perfect weather for the messianic times again. But the only reason there's seasons is because of the flood of Noah. Wow. And actually, yes, right, isn't that amazing? And before the flood, this one is, this one is like, this one is like, oh my God, this one ready for this. Why is it that culturally speaking all around the world, we have the same constellations? Like, I mean, oh, that's an archer. Oh, that's a big dipper. Like, there's no lines. Someone said it's a divine etch-a-sketch last year. I thought that was so cute. It was Naomi Connick last year. Southern, right, correct. But everybody in the Southern Hemisphere, they name all the constellations the same thing. Everybody in the Northern Hemisphere, how is it possible that all of us derive the same pictures? If we didn't have internet, so the answer is like this. The sages say that before the flood, there were actually pictures in the sky. Wow. There were actually pictures in the sky. And that when the flood happened, it was so turbulent for the whole universe that the pictures erased and we were just left with the memory. But that's why we actually, the, the constellations. Because how do we all know, why do we all have the same, how, why is it that we all have the same ideas of what, what the constellations are? Like, it's dots. We could get creative. Well, there's none in LA, but Hashem should bless our light pollution. But uh, someone was saying something over here? Well, I don't know. Do we have a un do you? I don't know of any traditions where there's universal ideas of what cloud movement looks like. But I'm happy to experiment. We could go up to Yosemite. <laughs> <laughs> we could bring some shamans with us. Like, we have a real good time on those clouds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm inviting you. I just think you should take me up on it. Haha. Okay. Pardon? Oh, Cindy, you know you're welcome. Come on. Okay, so that's so, so, so cool. Oh, here's a really fun one from the Zohar. Kabbalistically speaking, do you know what, on 126B, what, okay, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just having a heartbreak moment because I, I didn't get to like share it so much that I wanted to share. It's okay, everything is perfect. All right, deep breaths. Um, so at the end of Parshat Noah, at the end of the flood, we have the Tower of Babel being built. Okay, we're not going to get into the depths, but please God, we'll like get together and learn more and more Torah and we can share everything. The Zohar says it was actually the first spaceship. That the people were actually, they had ancient wisdom from the Nephilim, the giants. And these giants had heavenly wisdom because they were fallen angels. And that they had all this sick technological knowledge and that that was actually the first spaceship that was being built. Did you ever hear this, Danny? Wow. The Tower of Babel, according to the Zohar, one opinion is that it was a spaceship. And they were building it to go up to take war on God. So crazy. Wow. Isn't that really what mind blow? Mind blow. Yeah. Mind blow? Yeah. There's mind a reason blow. I keep asking about the mind blows. We're gonna get there in like three cards. Um by the way, you know, everybody has their own version. Okay, so uh, okay. In Brashi, we talk about Adam and Eve um, getting drunk. They say one idea is that the tree of uh, knowledge was grapes, they pressed it into wine, they got drunk and they tried to run away from God, and they were drunk and naked. Parsha Noah, it happens again. By the way, Brashi and Noah, they're the same story, it's told in two different ways. If you look at the themes, they're literally one for one, like they, they match perfectly. Even the creation of the world and how it happens, they match. Noah, at the end of his story, Finally, the ark lands. He's there. It's resting on Mount Ararat. He comes down, and what happens? He plants a vineyard. And he does this as if to try to rectify the sin of Adam and Eve, but in the end, what happens? He gets drunk and naked. And his son ends up or cast, castrating him or sodomizing him, uh, which is part of why a lot of the world has had a curse upon it. What? Moving right along. Moving right along, exactly. But, but why is it that everyone's getting drunk and naked? Haha, ha, it sounds funny, but honestly, it's true because all of us have our version of getting drunk, whether it's through alcohol or marijuana or Netflix or screen time or whatever our thing is where we're running away from God. And again, all of these can be awesome things, but we can all use them also as an escape. And then, and then, and then the getting naked is because there is this like, uh, and like adults, like that's sexuality is like a big part of our life and so it's like still here again in every parsha in the beginning of time god's like guys this is your story just work with it okay i feel you dog okay um okay 
One more quick mind blow. The olive branch that the dove brings back to Noah is not the end of the story. This is one of the most incredible Torahs I've ever learned. Do you want to share it? You know how the dove brings an olive branch? Everybody knows this? Dove brings yeah. an olive branch, right? Yeah. Yes, we all know this? Yeah. This is a Naomi story that she hates. Why was it so cute and then the dove brings an olive branch? <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys know this? The dove, can you guys actually even hear me out there? Hi, Folda. Thanks for having us in your house. The olive branch is taken from Noah and it's passed to his descendant Shem. And Shem passes it on and they, they press the olive and they make it into olive oil. And Shem seals it and puts his name on it and he passes it down through the generations. And when Jacob was coming to learn in the yeshiva, the house of study of Shem up in Sfat, if anyone knows where that's at, anyone ever been there, the yeshiva of Shem and Ever? Yeah, we've been there, right? We've visited, it still exists today. You can still wow. see that place. Oh yes, it's fantastic. It's right above the main street. I have a picture on my phone, I can show you after. Wow. Yes, so that's so he passes it to Jacob. And when Jacob realizes he's left something small behind and we'll get there in the Parshas in a few weeks, what does he leave? He leaves this olive oil that was pressed from the original olive branch because that olive branch represented hope, which is the mission of the Jewish people. And that olive oil was passed down and it got to J Joseph who ended up in, uh, in the palace in Egypt and it was taken down in past generations and it was carried across the split sea and then it was brought into Israel and they placed it where into the temple. And a few generations later, when we had the destruction of the temple, and there was this one holiday where we had a miracle. Oh. Oh. And they found some special oil. <laughs> this is the story of Hanukkah, and that the oil that they found in Hanukkah was so precious because it still had a seal on it. It was a seal of Shem, Kohen of Yon, the high priest of the time. And it, this oil, why was it so important? Because it represented hope, because when God was going to renew the world again, he could only renew it with hope. Again, that's the purpose of the Jewish people. We are the bringers and the holder onto of hope for the whole wide world. The whole world says, everything is going to SHIT, everything's falling apart, the universe, the environment, everything. And we're like, hold on, just hold on, keep holding on. There's hope, God is good, there's hope, God is good, there's hope. We're good, God is good, there's hope. That's what this oil is, and that's what happened with that initial olive branch. And it says, our sages say that oil is still somewhere, and it's going to carry to the end of time. Because what's the end of time? What's going to happen again? We get the, my favorite word? Mashiach. And what's Mashiach actually mean in English? Anointed. The anointed one. What's he anointed with? Wow. Noah. Wow. <coughs> okay. Three more. Three more. Look, we're so close. Four more. My math is off. What's that? What David Zeller would say about that. I heard that story from him. Uh, he would say that this was such a precious oil that they had. That and the human inclination to be to hold on to that oil. This is this goes way back. Okay. And the tikkun yeah. from Noah is, yeah. is all through that time they were just kind of holding on to the family, holding on to each other. Hold on for one and so way. and so th when they took this most precious oil that went way back to the beginning and they burnt it, they said we're going to use the oil. That was the big tikkun. That's very interesting. That's another boundaries thing, like when to let go, when to when to hold on. Well, we still have that light today because they. Because they used it, and maybe there's even some left. Okay, final mind-blowing Torah. You know how we started this class, and I said we're starting with this jam, and it's not just a cool hippie song, but it's actually really meaningful, right? We are rising up like a phoenix through the fire. Phoenix around the fire, brothers and sisters. By the way, this is why I wore this dress. I'm totally serious. I really thought about <coughs> what to wear. I was like, oh my god, I have a phoenix dress. We are rising up like a phoenix from the fire, Danny. We started the sh That's the bala bite. That's the guy that owns this house, by the way. So thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. So thank you so much for having us. He was actually in another Torah class, which is why he couldn't be out here from the beginning. This is the people of Israel, I tell you. Okay, well, sorry, I can't make your Torah class in my house. I have another one that I'm already committed to. Okay, great. So... So we brought this song about a phoenix in the fire. We said, why are we talking about this song? It's called, We Are Rising Up, because in a flood, you either sink or you rise, right? We all have to, in the flood of our lives, we have to rise. That's our only choice of the people of hope. We're not allowed to despair. We say there's no such thing as despair in this world. We don't do despair. Ex nay on the Ubit's day, you know? No despair. But so we said that there was a Torah about a phoenix. And what's a phoenix? What's a phoenix? A mythological bird. It's a mythological bird that? That rises from the ashes. So check this out. Not so mythological. Only mythological because it once existed. Say the sages, including the Lubavitcher Rebbe himself. You can find he has many different um, articles about it. 
The phoenix is this magical fiery bird that um, disintegrates, goes into its own ashes of its own fire, and then is reborn again. So check this out. Noah, according to the Midrash, he's on the ark, and one day he's feeding all the animals, which by the way, there's so much responsibility. He's going feeding all the animals. Oh my God, there's so much vegetarian sushi left. Oh no, that's fish. Oh, no, that's a fish. That's a fish. <laughs> Vegetarians enjoy. Anyways, he's going around, he's feeding all the different animals, and then, oh my god, all of a sudden he sees something crazy. He sees that there's a fire on the ark. Now tell me, if you have a wooden ark, and there's boiling hot water all around you, and then the whole world is dying, is it a problem if you have a fire on a wooden boat? Yeah. Yeah. So Noah's like, ah, ah, ah! But you know what? You know what's crazy? It's not burning anything. And you know what? Then I had the biggest finish. I was like, oh my god, that's like Moses in the burning bush. <gasps> That was my finish. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, but that's crazy in terms of the parallels between Moa, Moa, Noah, <laughs> between Moa. That's good. <laughs> we can go home now. It's now officially Moa. It's not Moshe and Noah. <laughs> Moses in the burning bush. The original, I think, Noah also has a burning bush. He sees the phoenix is a fire. It's on the ark. It's not burning. So he like slowly approaches this phoenix and he's like coming to check out this phoenix and he's like trying to understand what's going on and and he's like hello and the phoenix is like hey what's up. <laughs> He goes, oh my God, you're an animal. You're one of the animals. And the phoenix says, yes. And Mo Mo Noah quickly realizes, oh my God, if you're one of the animals on this ark, and if I didn't see you yet, it means I haven't fed you. I'm so sorry. You know, Noah was a righteous man, says God. Noah's job was to take care of the animals. And when he saw that he was missing an animal all that time, wow. it broke his heart. He's like, I'm so sorry. And he starts praying and he blesses the animal that it should live forever. Wow. And so the phoenix never dies. And so when the phoenix crumbles and disintegrates, this mythological creature, not so mythological, it once existed. And so the sages say it will exist again in the times of Mashiach because Moses gave it his blessing. Now, Lubav Jarebi actually says the reason it lived is because it never ate from the tree of knowledge, like all the animals did, but it did not. So it merited life. But I love this idea, and I just love Noah and his dedication. Wow. So here's the big question, ladies and gentlemen. Was that a mind blow? Hello, mind Phoenix blow. Torah. Oh, yeah. oh my God, Phoenix Torah. What did you ever learn in Torah about a Phoenix? Never, never, never. This is insane. So the question is, why spend an hour or two? <laughs> why spend an hour blowing our minds? What are we doing? Is this like Neely's, like, oh, let's be impressive, like, uh, oh. <laughs> Oh, ego boost. If I oh, give them, weekend. if I don't do a cohesive shear and I just tell them all the coolest things, they'll think I'm cool. Yeah. Because you want one thing links to another. If you blow your mind on one thing, then it's like a piggyback to another thing, and then it kind of mind blow right now. Like, Moshe was, how to get to the burning bush? He was chasing one animal, and that led him to that burning bush. Yeah, he was, that's a good point. I didn't actually think about that part. Thank you for yeah, developing so that. Like he, was he was taking, he was actually animal, taking care of the animals so well. Air five, brother, thank you. That was such a, you helped me complete that Torah. You guys get what he said? The only reason he got to the burning bush in the first place is because he, he didn't want to let this one little sheep go. It's one little sheep. He was taking care of yeah, so yeah. well. That's true, that's a connection. Wow. Yeah. That was deep. Yeah. Well, this brother. What, what this is brother is class? like this. Oh no! Seriously, seriously, seriously. This bro is sitting there smiling, but there's like so much Torah in his brain could almost explode. So the question is, why spend all this time blowing our minds? So I have to share with you one more Torah. It's one of my favorite. I give it over every year, and you'll understand why we did this. And I'll say like this: This is the best. Okay? Okay. Here we go. Guys, look at how good you are. Two more. I went to this rabbi in the old city, and his name is Rav Schloss. And you, you know Rav Schloss, we've talked about him. You know what, I'd like to ask a favor. May somebody please get me a bubbly water? Because I'm feeling parched. Okay, okay. Thank you. Oh, the hostess. Yeah. Uh, okay. Final Torah, are you ready? And that's going to answer our question is, why did we just spend an hour just trying to blow our mind on like this collection of Torahs from the first two portions of the Bible? Oh, then you like take a deep breath. I had too much caffeine today. <laughs> okay, cool. He says, you know, sometimes we gotta get simple. He says, you can learn everything you need to know about life, how to solve any problem in the world, with just the first four names of the first four portions of the Bible. So tonight we covered two, which is pretty epic and why it took probably longer. Thank you so much. So I don't need to make a blessing because I already made a blessing on that one and I have to actually explain to you because when somebody is drinking something new, you might think, oh no, I didn't bless God. So Allah, we actually have to explain it. Wow, I have options. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Fine, guys. Fine. To water, right? The theme of the week. 
A lot of people make mind lachaims. Those people that don't drink, we make mind lachaims. So he says you can have the solution to any single problem in your life with just the first four names. So the first, the first name is first, first portion, brashi, which means in the beginning. Uh, we'll do the meaning after. Sorry. Okay. Second one is we just learned parsha Noah. Okay. This the next two. Over the next two weeks are going to be lech lecha and vayera. Now what we're going to do is just quickly go over the meaning. Brashi means in the beginning. What did I say? I said, if you learn the first four names, you can solve any problem, and you know how to approach any problem in your whole life. And we've been discussing a lot of problems, you know? <laughs> it's true. It's true. That's our life. Yeah. Noah. What does Noah mean? Comfort. 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 Relax. Ease. Lech lecha means what? Go, go, go to? Go yourself. So we have a lot of chasses here. Go, go to yourself. Go inside. And what does vayera mean? See. You will see. So Reb Shloss says like this. In the beginning of any problem you're facing, Noah, chill out, relax. It's okay. This is from God too. You can be calm. You can relax. Lech lecha, just go inside, check in with yourself, and then you'll see. You'll get to some answers. And so what I realized is like a lot of times in life, I am like running miles and circles to try to figure out the things that I'm dealing with. And you know what? I realized um, in the very beginning, uh, I try to navigate how I want to explain this. Um, no. No, yeah, I should chill out, right? <laughs> um, why did I want to bring up the mind blowing? Because one Rosh Hashanah a few years ago, I'm standing in shul in synagogue and I hear the words in my head I'm in a very holy synagogue with very holy people around me and I hear the following voice scream in my head Neely how long are you not going to believe the words that you're saying huh. and I'm standing there on Rosh Hashanah saying God is good God is great God is trustworthy God is kind God is loving and in the meantime I'm freaking out <laughs> so I realized what do we need to do tonight we just need to blow our minds on God a little bit because then we can just then we can just relax. Then we can know if, if this all, all of this amazing wisdom is in the first two chapters of the Bible. Oh, wait, God is really that rad? God is really that? God really has a plan for all of this? God is telling me I'm with you in all your pain and all your struggle? Oh, cool. In the beginning, just, just Noah. We just need to relax. Because the really ikar, the, the main essence of everything is just trust. It's mm -hmm. just trust. Go into myself, figure out what's going on, and then I'll see. Right. So I was like, that's why we've got to spend an hour blowing our minds. Because if we're so mind blown, then we could chill out and say, oh my God, there's a master of the universe running this entire, hanging this ball of water with flashing light in the sky, s suspended in the middle of nothingness. And every star is perfectly placed, and every weak force, strong force, gravitational pull, what's the fourth one? Nuclear force, strong, nuclear, weak, strong force, Strong nuclear force, we can. Yeah, the forces that are in perfect, absolute balance. That if we were, if we were one one millimeter closer to the sun, we would burst, and we were one millimeter farther from the sun, we would freeze. Everything is hanging literally in perfect balance, and here I am tripping out on my life. So my blessing for all of us tonight is that Hashem should bless us. Hashem should bless us to, to, first of all, blow our minds on, on biblical learning and wisdom together in a beautiful group of humans, always just to keep learning. But Hashem should just bless us to blow our minds on the lightning and the trees and Romy and sushi and, um, like, friends and life and my lungs expanding and contracting. So we just keep blowing our minds so that we don't have to get so worried about the other stuff and we could just chill out and relax and Amen. do that. Amen. And then we will see the answer is because we're so mind blown on the goodness of God that we know that finally we can just chill out and relax and trust and it will flow and we will get the answers and it will be all good because as we learned, the first thing we learned, the whole history of the world, that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and it was chaotic and then he asked for light and then there was light and that's where we're at. We're, we're like we're like minutes away from the great revelation of light. So. I bless us all to Noah. When life is a flood, that we just get to chill and relax. And now, here's the next one. Can I get an amen? amen. amen. Okay.
And now yeah. I'm gonna do a dismissal, and everyone can just move around and move. And in like five minutes, I'm gonna give her my Noah wrap because it's so good. Uh, and I really thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Romy and Danny. Thank you, Naomi. Thank, thank, thank you, Hadi. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Thank you guys for coming out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fine, guys. Yeah. Fine. Cool. After thank Paul. It's so the after party. Yeah. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Before you go, I told you you had a job. Please turn to the person next to you, and of all these things, and if you want to review, you could look through them. What was the most mind blowing? What touched your heart? Please share with the both people next to you. Ready? Go. You're going to share the thing that was most mind blowing to you because it's very important to walk away with something. So we say, here we go, really quick. We talked about the whole history of the world in the first two. The big thing. Yoma Shishi. First emotion in the Bible. The snake. The hidden holidays. Everybody goes through it. Why is life? Boundaries. Boiled in Gehenna. Reincarnation. Kentucky. Oh. Are there mind blowing things? And the Phoenix. I know. Look at this beautiful chabra. Thank you, Hashem. Thanks, guys. I can't believe you brought up oh, kindergarten in fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Elementary school friends. That's what's up. That's right. All right. This is so beautiful. Look at how beautiful all these holy people. So amazing. All right. I'm going to leave this going for the wrap. that whenever I learn the part Noah, it rains. It does. It always does. It does. It's really insane. Well, not in LA, but in New York, sitting where I live. Right, it always rains. I know, it's crazy. Yeah, it's so crazy. The only time it did not rain was my five message of all the rain is coming down. That's right. It's starting to rain really hard. All right, so folks online, I'm going to turn this off, but if you want to hear, you know, maybe, uh, yeah, if you want to hear the rap, you can go to YouTube and look up Neely Salem Parshat Noah and you'll find the rap in there, okay? So if you want to hear the Parshat rap, you can go to Parshat Noah Neely Salem on YouTube and it will be there. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Shepa! Keep it on? Okay, I'll keep it on. Guys, it's time for the wrap. Are you guys ready for this? Da -na 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 -pa 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 -pa.
and turning it around.